Hello everyone, Dr. Dan Lawrence here. You know that by now, though I shouldn't even say that. I hope you're uh, enjoying the class. This is, I keep saying it's going to be brief too, but then I go too long. I'm going to try to be really brief here. Ian Bogost, procedural rhetoric. I want to spell out a basic understanding of that concept of what procedural rhetoric is and then talk a little bit about how you can apply that in your paper that'll be coming up on procedural rhetoric. So, right, rhetoric is the art of persuasion. Ian Bogost was a, is a game designer and rhetorician and theorist who said, wait a minute, it seems to me that procedures and processes are argumentative themselves. That is that the very way that rules and order and software are compiled can have persuasive effects upon you. And I've tried to, pro he, I think he provides some very, really good examples, but sometimes it's, he uses video games as his way of making that argument. And I think that sometimes prevents us from seeing the broader applications of this idea. I think procedural rhetoric might be the most important contribution to the field of rhetoric that I've seen since I've been a rhetorical scholar. That's my take, but because it's, it's such a powerful and radical idea that um, applies beyond software even in, into the into the material, immediate, physical reality that we live in as well. Um, the example I give there and, and in the textbook is, you know, imagine that you have, imagine that you, you have a civil engineer who designs a bridge that has a height capacity that doesn't allow public transportation to go across the bridge. You've actually You've created a, a, a particular logic in the civil engineering of the city that will persuasively affect the actual environment and the way that people live. That now it's like a certain segment of the population that relies on public transportation won't be able to navigate to this part of the city. And maybe that's done intentionally or purposefully. Um, in the realm of software, Bogost uses the example of like a character creation screen. So even if you don't play video games, just hear this out, right? Um, in, in video games, you can often create your own avatar, right? You can design your own character in the game that you then play as in that world, right? In that, in that fictional world. But for a long time in in video game development, the skin, the skin colors, the range of skin colors you could choose from were predominantly white and lighter tones. So Bogost is saying that makes an argument about what is normative. That makes an argument about what is ideal. That makes a really problematic or argument, right? That we should critique and criticize because what that, what that software is arguing is that here's the range of skin tones that are acceptable and maybe yours is not included in that. That's a kind of procedural argument. It's the very way that the fictional reality of that game is coded makes an argument itself. It's saying that here it's, it's denied access to a certain range of expression of skin tone is what that procedure has done. So the very... The, the, the procedures, processes, and logic of reality can make arguments about the world. And so in this paper, I'm asking you to think about, think about a, so a piece of software or an application or a game that you, you know, that you use regularly and th or technology, right? Kind of broadly construed. Um, really broadly construed, pick something that interests you, and then apply Bogost's, Bogost's theory of procedural rhetoric to that in an analysis. So a, a really, um, let's give you some more examples. Um, something that's been critiqued very widely in social media development is the infinite scrolling. 
So if you open up Facebook and you can just scroll, I have my imaginary phone here, infinitely scroll down, 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 down. It will always serve you new content algorithmically, right? There's the procedure and the process, but also the fact that the developers coded it that way, that it could infinitely scroll. It's this argument that there's an infinite well and psychology, right? Facebook hires PhDs in psychology to develop these addictive, compelling um, user experience traits and characteristics. So that what is the argument? That, what is the argument of the infinite scroll? It's to keep going. It's that there will always be new and novel content, and then that shapes the way that you interact with the with the software. That's the very procedure itself is, is this infinite kind. There's no escape. There's no what we call an exit point, right? There's no drop off point if it just infinitely scrolls and scrolls and scrolls. And so the very process of that, the very way that it's coded, the very way it's designed makes an argument. And, and that argument is keep going infinitely forever keep stay with us and bogost with procedural rhetoric gives us a kind of toolkit to critique the algorithm to critique the code to critique the way that it's designed which i think is really useful and really compelling and it's why i'm asking you to uh, apply bogost procedural rhetoric to um to a technology, software, application, game, something in your life. Um, so have fun with it, experiment a little bit, and, and think big. Those are just some quick examples that kind of rolled off the top of my head and I've been using for a long time, but there's so many more. I mean, I've, I've had students write about how, you know, they've had some of their content censored on TikTok or something by an algorithm, right? Some Somehow it used um, speech-to-text processing or it looked at keywords in the tags uh, in the in the title of the videos or something and it, it it automatically censored that content that's a procedural argument that's an that's an algorithm automatically saying that this is invalid content that we don't want on our platform and then you know used Bogost to analyze how that was procedurally rhetorical in a really problematic critical way um, what I'm failing to do here is to think of, you know, there are, there are ways that procedures can be helpful too, right? Um, think about like, you know, a person who's trying to live a little more healthily, so they throw out all the donuts. They socially engineer their kitchen in such a way that they get rid of all the unhealthy ingredients. That's a kind of procedural argument, right? They've, they've actually reshaped, uh, socially engineered their environment in such a way that it's now impossible for them to consume donuts by, or cakes or whatever by eliminating all those things from their immediate environment and thereby creating a kind of procedural argument about what is or is not healthy in a way to try to determine their behavior. As again, this procedurality, this procedural rhetoric. So think big, you know, take some time to mull over and, and read through the excerpt from Bogost and think about the applications. And I wrote a little bit about procedural rhetoric in the textbook as well that you can find. And I hope this video just kind of helps spell that out a little bit for you. It's a big idea, right? All, that all procedures can be rhetorical, that all processes can be rhetorical and not just in not just in video games that Bogost is using for his examples, but also in, you know, physical reality, in other software, and all over us. It's the almighty algorithm, right? The almighty algorithms are always trying to move us and persuade us and shape us in certain ways. And procedural rhetoric is a way to stop and analyze those algorithms and those processes and those procedures. Good luck. Thanks.